Matt Wollen from Shutterrunner.com here, and this is my HDR tutorial. As you can see, I'm set up here on top of a parking garage in the middle of downtown Chicago. I already composed the picture that I'm going to take for this tutorial, and this is Willis Tower, formerly Sears Tower, and it's the tallest building in the United States. So I did a, a nice job of finding a quiet spot up here. There, and I'll show you that right now. There are no cars and there's no people on top of the garage so I, I you know gave me a chance to take my time to set up also the weather is is really nice for this shot it's a nice partly cloudy day um, it should make for a really nice picture looking up so uh, so yeah so now let's take a closer look at the camera settings that I'll be using for this shot okay so now you can see the back of the camera and I turn on live view mode so you can watch as I actually take the pictures I obviously don't always shoot in live view, I just set it up this way so you can see. The first and most important setting, which you can't see here, is auto bracketing. I set up auto bracketing at plus or minus one stop with nine exposures. A lot of cameras won't actually let you shoot that wide of a range, and it's probably overkill. But there is a lot of dynamic range in the scene, you know, with the bright sky and the darker buildings. So that's why I set it up to take, take uh, so many pictures. The next setting that you can see at the top of the screen is the picture quality, which I've set to RAW. You should always shoot in RAW mode because it's the only setting that gives you the ability to make adjustments to the exposure and white balance settings without losing quality. Um, you'll see next to RAW mode that I've selected the daylight white balance setting. And it's important to always pick a specific white balance mode when shooting HDR as opposed to using auto white balance because this will keep a uniform white balance in all the brackets that I take. And since I'm shooting in RAW, it's not a big deal if I don't capture the perfect white balance for the scene because I can always make adjustments like I said in post. And you'll see that in part two of the tutorial. So now looking at the bottom of the screen, you'll see that I'm shooting in aperture priority mode. This means that I will choose the aperture to shoot in and the camera will automatic, automatically calculate the exposure for each of the nine images that I take. For HDR, you always wanna shoot in aperture priority mode because you want each of the brackets to be shot at the same aperture so when they're blended together to create the HDR image they'll have a uniform focus. Moving on you can see that I chose f8. Um, I almost always shoot HDRs at high aperture settings because I don't like the way a bouquet looks in HDR. Since I'm so far away from these buildings I should be able to get a nice infinite focus of everything in the scene even with a low f-stop value. Um, Okay, and then the last setting here is the ISO. And for HDR, you always want to shoot at the best quality ISO setting. And for the Nikon D700, that happens to be ISO 200. For most cameras, it will be the lowest ISO setting the camera has, but in this case, it's 200. All right, so let's take these brackets. Okay, so now that we've taken our brackets, let's have a look at them. I'm reviewing the pictures in the histogram view. The x-axis of the histogram view represents brightness, with the far left meaning pure black, and the far right meaning pure white. The y-axis of the histogram represents the number of pixels in the image with that level of brightness. When you see the histogram bunched up to the far left or right side like this, this is called clipping and it's not good. It means that the camera sensor wasn't sensitive enough to capture the light correctly and it recorded several pure black or pure white pixels in the shot. And as you can see in this shot, you can see where the highlights clipping occurred in this section of the clouds where it's pure white. As I look at the next images, starting with the darkest first, you can see the opposite effect has occurred with shadows clipping. But this bracket contains the properly exposed section of the sky right here, which where we saw it was improperly exposed in the previous shot. So essentially what HDR is going to do is it allows you to blend together multiple images of the same scene so that the image is accurately represented for all pixels. And as I scroll through the rest of the images here, 
you can see how the various images contain the properly exposed sections that make up the entire image.